Hello and welcome to my stream. Tonight we're playing more of Digimon World. And first of all, I should say or talk about the change of schedule in here. Because from now on, I'll be streaming two different games on Saturdays and on Sundays. Like, we were only playing Digimon World on both of those days. But I decided to split them. Uh, I decided to play different games in each day. Because we were playing Digimon World and we are still playing it for a long time. And as this is like one of the eternal games of the channel that never end, why not bring up the other eternal channel of uh, the other eternal game of this channel as well, right? Which was Roller Coaster Tycoon Deluxe. So thanks to that, on Saturdays we are be playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, and then on Sundays we'll be playing Digimon World. Let's see which one of them will end first. I actually think that we'll be able to complete Digimon World first. Even though Roller Coaster Tycoon um, has more, uh, it's more predictable, like, it, it, depending on the level, of course, because there are some levels in there that are very hard, but I want to believe in myself that I can beat a level per stream in Roller Coaster Tycoon. At least yesterday I got lucky to get an easy level. But in Digimon World, it's more unpredictable, right? I don't know what's going to happen once I start a new cycle. And speaking of the cycles, last weekend we were very lucky because even though when, when we were trying to get new ultimates and new Digimon, we got, in the end, into a Numemon. Yes, I messed up with the training, and then after so long, we could finally find Numemon, uh, some people's in here favorite Digimon on this game. He actually helped us a lot throughout this game, so I shouldn't be uh, roasting him that much. But yeah, we got him again, and then he helped us to learn all of the filth attacks. So in case we get him again, maybe he won't be that helpful anymore. But yeah, that was pretty much the biggest thing we achieved last time that I can remember. Also, we tested out more of the curly minigame. But sadly, we couldn't get a very good reward from it, so maybe from now on, I will also skip the curly minigame. And we also got a medal, because as I was fishing, to use the fish to participate into the curling games, I fished a lot, and then that was a medal of this game. But today, today, I think I started a cycle for Palmon, if I'm not mistaken. And that's because we're still missing two Digivolutions for Palmon. And I also think I'm missing like her true or best Digimon or Digivolution. Hopefully we can see that happening today. But I'm not sure because, as I just said, this game is freaking unpredictable. But yeah, let's see how is this new schedule going to be like with Roller Coaster Tycoon back on Saturdays. Because that's a game that I have been playing uh, for more than a year. But I took a break, and then now I decided to go back to it, to give it more variety to, to the channel. And as, like I said, these two games have been very long, let's tackle them both at the same time, right? Let's complete the long games, and then we can move on to some shorter games and faster games, and then after them we can go back to another long game. But let's see how that's going to be like, and yeah, let's start the, the Digimon run right now. Also, hey Alza, uh, have a great tea. And hey Victor, how are you, man? Hopefully you guys are having a good weekend. Oh yes, I forgot to say that I'm starting my stream sooner today because in some hours, in four hours from now, there will be a Big Brother Brazil episode. And I have been watching it. And I know it's like a dumb show, or like it's a, you know, empty show as well. I'm aware about that, but since the pandemic started last year, I kind of started watching it again, because I used to watch it back in the day, and then I took a break, and then now I'm back to it. Because, I don't know, it's been distracting me, or it's something else to think about. Even though it's been very serious, I'm not gonna lie, the... Sh the this season of the Big Brother Brazil has been very heavy, messed up, and depressing even. A lot of shitty things are happening in there. But I want to see the bad people in the, in, the, in the show. 
to have a bad destiny as well. I want to see them getting screwed up. So I'm also watching it because of that. And today is going to be a very important episode, so I kind of don't want to miss it out. And it's happening in four hours from now, so I decided to start the, the stream sooner thanks to that. I won't be doing it like every freaking Sunday or every freaking time. But this one, this one episode today, I think it's going to have a lot of trouble going on. And I want to kind of check it out. Nice to hear you're doing pretty good, man. All things considered. You had a really shit week, though. That sucks, because last week you were having trouble to sleep. Mostly thanks to your cat, right? But then now you're having a shitty week as well. I mean, my week was so-so, I would say. There were problems, there were situations. I was even talking to Ultras and Joe Dancing yesterday that... Uh, I think I had a somewhat stressed week, even though I only realized that yesterday. But I also had a very crazy and accurate tarot reading for what was going on and what's been going on in my life. That was also very mind blowing, and it was raising my intuition and my, you know, senses, my sixth sense, into perceiving things. So, yeah, it was a crazy week for me to be pretty much thinking about my life, or especially the relationships I have in my life. And one of my relationships is kind of going into. I don't want to say disappointing ways, but I don't know, it could have been better maybe, or my expectations were, were different than what is going on. Although on the other hand, another relationship of mine proved to be like fantastic, so I, I, I was happy for that conclusion uh, out of the end of this week, right? Like in the past days I got to that conclusion, but yes, I was having some trouble in there, but now I'm kind of getting some answers from my intuition. And thanks to that, I don't think everything was that bad, but it was a weird week for sure. Uh, you were playing Mario 64, okay, that's a very good game for you to be chilling or just to be relaxing. I do miss playing platformers already, especially Mario games, it's been, you know, it's been a while since I last played Mario games. So it's cool, yeah, man. Uh, do you have a favorite level in Mario 64? Yesterday we were talking about Bowser, because I watched a video, Victor, that this guy decided to kind of find or sort every different color... Uh, every different color Bowser has ever had throughout his history. And, in, and, and thanks to that video, I realized that my favorite Bowsers are the ones in Mario 64 and in Mario RPG. But also, I learned about the existence of a blue Bowser. Have you ever heard of a blue Bowser? It seems that there is a blue Bowser in Super Mario Bros. 2, the Lost Levels. And still today, nobody is really sure of who he really is. Like, if it is a... a, a I don't know, a brother or a relative of the Bowser we know. It's a very mysterious version of Bowser. Because you know that in the first game we had the Green Mario, which turned to be Luigi. And then now there is this mysterious blue Bowser in the Lost Levels that... Nobody really knows who he, re who he really is. Even Nintendo was giving crazy answers in their publications, like on magazines. So I was very intrigued to learn about a blue Bowser. There is the blue Bowser in Smash, and if you check his description in Smash, it points out that he's based on the blue Bowser from the Lost Levels. I had no idea about his existence. Uh, not really, you really like Big Boo's Hound? Really? That's an interesting pick. Actually, that's the level that made me freaking scared of Mario 64, right? Thanks to the piano. But it's not the only one. I also used to be very scared of the eel from Raleigh Rogers Bay. I believe a lot of people were also scared of him or of that eel. Although today it's one of my favorite levels, if not my favorite level. 
and then you also love Bubba on the battlefield and Rainbow Ride. Interesting that you picked Rainbow Ride because that level can be so annoying for you to get the 100 coins. Yeah, I also didn't know about this blue Bowser guy. I was kind of thinking that maybe Nintendo should do something about him, like give him more backstory or turn him into one of those Wa Waluigi's, Wa Wario's and now Wa Bowser, you know? I, I would be down for that. And another fun fact, Victor, that I learned this week, I was telling Ultras this one. Did you know, Victor, that there is a, an unused, it is an official, but unused art of Ganondorf and it's an unused art from the Breath of the Wild manga series an unused art of Ganondorf wearing a Metallica shirt and I'm not kidding maybe if you google it like Ganondorf Metallica you'll be able to see the art that I'm talking about so yeah there is also the existence of that Ganondorf wearing a Metallica shirt for who knows why as we were talking about metal music and a lot of those things in the past weeks, after I learned about the existence of this one official art, but unused, I had to share that with you. I don't know who is the fan of Metallica that decided to do that. Like, I can see Ganondorf enjoying metal music, but I wonder why Metallica? I, I was with that question on my mind. But look that up, man. You will find Ganondorf wearing a Metallica shirt for some reason. And then we also learned that Nintendo really had plans on making uh, The Last of Zelda series. And also Star Fox as well, a Star Fox series. But it seems that after those rumors, or uh, after those plans were leaked, they gave up on the idea. And then I felt kind of sad because even though net, I don't know if it were Netflix that was really working on those series. I think it was, but I'm not sure. But like we know that Netflix live actions and adaptations of video game content or even anime content can be bad, right? Like the Death Note adaptation they had, and some other ones too. But I really like the idea. I I, I think that a Zelda show could be really great. Plus, Nintendo has been very cautious about what people are doing regarding their characters and regarding their first party products, right? So I would like to imagine that they wouldn't allow Netflix to really ruin that show, you know? I think they would be there next to them, forcing them to make something good out of it, you know? So that would give me hope that they wouldn't mess it up. But yes, after the information got leaked, they gave up on it. Yeah, the piano is everybody's trauma from Mario 64 for sure. But today you think it's part of why you love it? Remember when we were talking about the video game or like booting up video game sound effects, the ones that are the best out there? And how I said that the PlayStation 1 starting sound effect or booting sound effect makes me unsettled or it's kind of disturbing. Today I, I, I realize that's why I like it as well. I used to be scared of it, but today I think it's so good because it is so mysterious and it sounds alien even. Definitely very beyond of its time. Although regarding the the level you're saying, the Big Boo's Hound, no, it's not my favorite. I think that Rolly Rogers Bay can be my favorite. But I also really like Wet and Dry World. I remember being so amazed by the first time I played it. Definitely not my favorite levels in Mario 64 are the snow ones. Yes, I'm not a fan of the snow levels in there. There are only two, right? But I don't like them. Uh, you and a friend talked a lot about the idea of a Zelda show back in like 20, 2012 or so. 
I think we eventually came to the conclusion that Zelda series would have to be too different from the games, that it wouldn't really work. I mean, there are things in, in video games that make way more sense in the video games, right? For example, uh, I don't know, you are... I don't know, opening a, a, a room and then suddenly there is a treasure chest in there, you know? In, in real life, that's kind of too abstract. Probably that treasure chest wouldn't be in a very small room, it would be in a bigger room or something with other things in there, and then suddenly there is a treasure chest. Just an example, there are some things that I, I can see them working in video games, but not really in a series or in a movie. Because it feels weird, like, why would that be... What would that be doing there? For example, the freaking crazy weapons that are so well hidden in the dungeons, but you need to use them to beat the dungeon's puzzles. Those sort of things, you know. I don't know if they would really feel natural if they were adapted into a movie or into a series. Probably not. But... There are other ways they can try adapting the series. Maybe if they go on a more creative and even unique way of adapting it. I know that there is going to be a risk because by doing that they would be more distant from the games. But there are ways, you know. But yes, for example... If they have to adapt this dungeon situation, it is hard to think how they would be doing that. Unless they kinda do not show many puzzles being so solved or something, and then they go straight into bosses. I'm not sure. But there are things that could work out really well, for example, Link exploring the cities and the villages and knowing and meeting those people, those characters, and trying to understand what were their problems and trying to find his next path, like, oh yes, in order to get to that place that's sacred or has the item you're looking for, you gotta help me out with this, or you gotta find this one item, or you gotta do this training. I can see that going on, but it is definitely challenging, and maybe they would have to go on a, on a more different and... Um, yeah, different works for, I'm, for what I'm trying to say, uh, on a more different way than the, than the games. Like, you won't see exactly what is happening in the games, because I don't think everything in there will work properly on the show. But some other things could work, especially regarding the music. Like, I don't think it would be a problem for Link to be playing an ocarina and then suddenly magic powers happen, you know? That actually could look awesome on a TV show. Also, hey X5, how are you? This roller coaster tycoon looks like a monster. Wait, I'm pretty sure I changed the title, haven't I? But yesterday I was playing roller coaster tycoon. Yeah, now it's my Saturday game. But I could swear I changed the title. Is it still saying roller coaster tycoon? Oh, really? Okay, so give me a second because I gotta change that. Also, hi Nubbo, how are you? It is saying Roller Coaster Tycoon, so I forgot about that then. Thank you for letting me know. And hey Ultros, how are you? You made chili oil this morning, the freaking uh, pep uh, pepper flake sauce you were talking about yesterday, right? And how was it? Have you used it on your rice? I cooked rice today. So where is my dashboard in here? Yes, it's same roller coaster type, and you guys are right.
Okay, let me know if it has changed now. Hopefully it changed. Uh, let me see which strategy I'm going for today. So you can become Palmon or Betamon, wasn't it? Okay, there we go, it worked. Yes, it's been a while since I last had Balmon, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get this right. But I will try going for attack. And the other thing I remember about Balmon as well is that she used it to be very... very skinny or thin. So I will try not to give her a lot of weight. But hopefully by training his attack, I'll be able to get Palmon. So Victor was saying that he thinks that the specific things that make Zelda so magical can't be done in a series like that, but sure. They could perhaps get around it in cool ways. Yes, I don't think they would be able to get a straight video game based show to us. But they could still make something epic. Epic and magical. I can see them doing that, especially if they really invest into the ocarina, for example. Uh, if they add those elements that music matters so much in Zelda games. And also the creatures. If they, if they can do a good job about recreating the creatures like the Rutos. The Rutos. The Ritos, right? And Ruto is a Zora. The Zoras... Uh, the Koroks, the Kokiris, all of those species of creatures or living beings, Gorons as well. If they can do a good job on creating them, that's going to be a, a great help for us to get used to the universe, even though it's not a, a video game. Although, Victor, you know what could work better maybe for... As a Zelda series, we are here talking about it, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a live action, don't you think? It could be an animated series, it could be a maybe even a CGI series, even though uh, then it may not be too different from the video game gra graphics. And then you would ask yourself, like, what is the point of doing this? Maybe they could add more depth or give us new stories or new side quests on the on the show or something but it doesn't really need to be necessarily a live action it could be an animated series or something like that it could even have its own story and if they if, if they can go on something more cartoonish looking maybe they would be able to recreate that magic or that uh that special characteristic that, that the Zelda franchise has in an easier way than a live action. I don't think they can replicate the things that makes Zelda games so good in, in that sense. It feels like it's bound to be a, a failure in some ways. Even if it is a failure, I would still want to see it happening. With low expectations, of course. I would have low expectations, but I would like to see how it would be like. Uh, X5 is doing good, great, man. He's a little bit sleepy, but you had a really good week. There we go. Uh, your girlfriend came by surprise for your birthday. Happy birthday! Are you Aquarius as well? And we spent some days together. Yeah, this week was also my birthday, by the way. So let's go X5. I think you told me that, right? Uh, although, yes, wait. W wasn't your birthday in the same day as mine? And I was like surprised that I finally met somebody that celebrates their birthday in the same day as mine. Aren't you from February 2nd? Because I'm from February 2nd. So Groundhog Day, best holiday, right? 
That's true, I remember that now. There we go, man. Congrats, happy birthday. I'm happy you had a great celebration. And Electra's birthday is in, is in a few days too. So you're also Aquarius, right? Unless it is past, I don't know, uh, the 24th, I think, and then it changes into Pisces. But if it's in a few days, then it's also your, your birthday and then Aquarius. Lots of Aquarius in here. I normally can't remember the days of people's birthdays, but I can remember people's horoscope or signs. Uh, let me check Ultra's picture in there. Uh, he made a rice noodle dish with tofu and bean sprouts and drizzled the chili flake oil on it. Yeah, you were saying how great it tastes like when you add the... Wait, but this is very close to what you also had yesterday, right? You were eating something like this yesterday. Wait, what is that first picture right there? Is that your... The, the oil you, you were kind of seasoning for you to mix it with the pepper flakes? And then you were using bay leaves, onions, and I'm not sure if those are the pepper flakes, because there are some grains on it. Oh yeah, and then that's the pepper flakes. Uh, the one image is oil is simmering with garlic and cloves. Wait, garlic? Is oh maybe it's like powdered? Oh no, never mind. I could see the the garlic right now. Yeah, it's on the top of the picture. Yeah, I saw the bay leaves, the onion, and peppercorns. Okay, so those are the grains. Then once the stuff starts to look a little brownish and roasted, you strain the oil into a into a into a what a car a char a jar no half filled with the flakes wait the twitch game category is still shows rct oh there we go it's correct okay uh, the big thing about zelda is like you are the player or link right you never have dialogue that's true i was not thinking about that that's one point that I was not aware. And it's going to be very weird if Link starts to talk. That's very true. Unless you have a crazy Zelda series that doesn't have Link. Which is weird, but it's possible maybe?